McDonald, and I'm about to begin my presentation on Shakespeare's play, Romeo and Juliet. I was given Act 5, Scenes 1 through 3, and that is what I will be speaking on. I hope you enjoy my presentation. As I said, the act I was given and I, and I am presenting is Act 5, and this act has three scenes total. I am happy I received this act because I find it is the most interesting one. I think other than the act that involves the balcony scene, that this is the other most popular act that exists in the play. I enjoyed Act 5 from beginning to end, and like that outcome that happens between the two fathers, which I will talk about shortly. What I will do for this presentation. I will speak about the principal characters in Act 5 of Shakespeare, and I will tell you a little bit about each of those characters. I will then go into depth about the figurative language, and I will even share some quotes from Act 5, Scene 1, 2, and 3. I will give an opinion and recommendations for people reading this book, and I will also tell you what I did not like about the final scene. So like I said, I will begin with the characters, the principal characters in Act 5 of Romeo and Juliet are Bra Barbazor, Friar Lawrence, Lord Capital and Lord Montague, Prince Ellis, Romeo and Juliet. Now I will go into de depth about each of these characters. First I'll talk about Bathysor and how he is a principal character. So he is a servant of the Montagues but he's seen as a friend to Romeo. He acts as messenger. In this act, he comes and tells Romeo that Juliet is dead. And Romeo also gives him a note that he has previously written to be given to the prince after the deaths happen. Friar Lawrence. Friar Lawrence, he is the only one who knows everything that is going on. He is helper to Romeo and Juliet, and a wise advisor to the pair. He wants them to be together because he believes that the union will bring peace to the families. He gives Juliet the sleeping potion so she looks dead, and watches over her. He tells the fathers what happened to Romeo and Juliet, and helps them make peace. Now both Lords, Lord Capital and Lord Montague. Lord Capital and Lord Montague, as a pair, these two fathers are principal characters. At this point, they realize that it's basically their fault that their children are dead, because if they were not fighting, none of this would have happened. And they make peace together after realizing this, only when it's too late and ending their generational feud. They shook hands, they apologized, they called each other family. They made things better between them, it's too bad that they had to lose a loved one to make peace. Continuing on, I'll talk about Prince Ellis. Prince Ellis, he comes in at the end of Act 5 after hearing about the deaths of Romeo and Juliet. He is telling the fathers to start getting along, telling them that they are the reason all of this happened. He says, all are punished as he has lost two kinsmen himself. He is blaming himself and others for not stopping the feud between the two families. He talks about how ending the fighting could have prevented the deaths of Romeo and Juliet. Now finally, the principal character of Miss Juliet. Juliet is the lover of Romeo she fakes her death so that she can get back to Romeo. When she awakes to him dead, she kisses him trying to suck the poison out of his mouth. Then she stabs herself with a dagger, killing herself. Now the principal character of Romeo. Romeo, he is the great lover. He comes back for Juliet thinking she's dead after being delivered the news of her death. 
and when he sees her, he doesn't realize that she is fake. It's a fake death, and he buys illegal poison from a pharmacist and kills himself. After killing Paris, who was in the tomb, he killed Paris because he, he was fighting with Romeo about opening the tomb and wouldn't leave. Now I will elaborate on the characters enough. I hope I elaborated enough on the characters. Now, moving forward, I'll talk about the main event. There are a few main events that happen at the end of this book. The main event that happened throughout Act 5 of Romeo and Juliet is the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet dying. The final event was that the two fathers, Lord Montague and Lord Capitet, show that they are going to begin getting along. They shake each other's hands after the news of the tragedies occur. They call each other brother, which is a big step. They are putting the family history of shakes of hatred towards one another to an end. This is an act of explosion, rising action, climate, falling action, and resolution. Act 5, Romeo and Juliet have three of these. Act 5 involving the climate, action, and resolution. The climate would be when Romeo gets banished from the kingdom for murdering Tibet and the conversation of Juliet taking poison from Friar Lawrence. The following action would be Juliet taking the poison from Friar Lawrence to pose as being dead so that she could be with Romeo eventually. The resolution of the act of the story and Juliet itself is the two of them die tragically and in love and the family of capitals and the family of monarchies make peace with each other because of the deaths that happened. Now I'll talk about figurative language in Act 5 of Romeo and Juliet. One example is at the beginning of scene in Act 5, scene 1, Act 5. Romeo tells that he dreamt my lady came and found me dead. So this would be an example of foreshadowing because it is a hint of what is expected to come. This actually does happen later on in the story, as much as the audience didn't want it to happen. Another example of figurative language in Act 5 of Romeo and Juliet, and that the trunk be discharged of breath as violently as hasty powered fire. This is a quote, a quote from Act 5, Scene 1. This is an example of figurative language, would be a simile, because it uses the word as to compare the trunk and a violent gun. This quote that Romeo says he is looking to bribe someone for poison and plans to consume and commit suicide. The third example I chose for figurative language in Act 5 of Romeo and Juliet is this. The sun for sorrow will not show his head. This is said in Act 5, Scene 3. This is an example of personification because it is given the sun which is an object, the ability to feel sorrow. It mentions its head, which is a human quality, and the gender, which we know the sun does not have. The prince is the one who expects this in Romeo and Juliet. The reason he even said this is because he is trying to explain to the families that the feud that they had is kind of the actual cause of the deaths of Romeo and Juliet. Lastly, the fourth figurative language in Act 5 of Romeo and Juliet I chose is this one. O oh me, the sight of death as a bell that warms my old age to a sips. O oh me, the sight of death is a bell that warms my old age to a this is a quote from Act 5, Scene 3. 
This is an example of a simile, Act 5, because it uses the word as to compare the sight, to, uh, sight of death to a bell. Romeo is the one who says this in the play. He says this because he is not going to live this to an old age, and he knows it. Lastly, now I have shown you the ex examples of figurative language, I will begin to mention examples of famous scenes in Act 5. The first famous quote I want to point out is, Then I deny you, stars. This is said in Act 5, Scene 1, by Romeo. Romeo says this upon hearing that Juliet has died. I believe he is saying this because he is planning to take fate in his own hands by killing himself, and the stars have lost all light because he has lost his lover. His love is now in the stars. The next famous quote I want to touch on is this one. If I can trust the favorable truth of sleep, then my dreams foretell some joyful news is on its way. This is said in Act 5, Scene 1. Romeo is the one who says this quote. He wants to go to sleep because in his dreams everything is lovely and much happier than reality, and he wants to die because it is better than living without Juliet. Now, for the most famous scene that occurs in Act 5, Scene 5, Act 3, holds one of the most famous scenes of all this play, the scene of the fake death of Juliet, which becomes the real scene of Romeo's death. And when Juliet wakes up and finds Romeo dead, she kills herself for real. To elaborate, Ju Juliet takes a medication from Friar Lawrence that is supposed to knock her out and make her seem as though she is dead. She lays in the tomb, faking her death. She wakes up as Romeo's dead beside her because when he went to visit her in the tomb, his emotions were high and he ended up killing himself. He killed himself to be with her. When Juliet awakes from her death, she could not handle the fact that Romeo was dead beside her, and she attempted to suck the poison out of his mouth, which didn't work. So he, she took a dagger and stabbed herself with it. She faked her death to be with him, but it went terribly wrong. This is tragic love that involves a double suicide, unfortunately. If I was asked to change one thing about Act 5 in Romeo and Juliet, I would say I wouldn't change anything other than the scene where Paris comes in I would take Paris out of this act altogether. I do not see a reason for him being here. I think it's actually needless. The, this, the scene that I am talking about is in scene three, when Paris goes into the tomb where Juliet is secretly faking her death. Paris refuses to leave when Romeo shows up. It exhalates very quickly and Romeo kills him. It's basically a love triangle gone wrong and I found it very unnecessary. If I was asked to recommend this book, this is what I would say. I would recommend this book because I believe it is Shakespeare's best play. And this is a great story. It's very interesting and well written. And makes you wonder what will happen next. I'd recommend it to anyone of any age above 13, especially to people who like literature. That should conclude my presentation for Act 5 of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you have any other questions, feel free to email me and ask me. Otherwise, thank you, classmates and Miss Amanda. Goodbye.